Good evening. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Amita Balachandra. There's a very important topic that we're going to be talking about today, and that is the changes that's been made to the entry level qualifications for engineering programs. And this change has been made by the All Indian Council for Technical Education, which is also known as AICTE. Now, let me give you a brief picture of what's happened. This is what they've said, right? Physics, mathematics, and chemistry, they've said, are now optional and not mandatory subjects for pursuing engineering. Now, let me give you a brief background of what it used to be like before and what it is now. Earlier, physics and maths were compulsory, and the third subject could be one of these 11 subjects that you are looking at. The candidate must have cleared any of the three subjects that he or she chooses with 45% marks. But physics and maths were compulsory. What's happened now is that 14 subjects, which includes physics, mathematics, chemistry, have been listed. And a candidate can choose any of these 14 subjects that you're looking at right now and must clear the, uh, those three subjects with 45% marks. So basically, they've made it optional and not mandatory. What they've also said is that the universities will offer suitable bridge courses, such as mathematics, physics, engineering, drawing, etc., for students coming from diverse backgrounds who've not taken BCM uh, as their core subject, to achieve what they're saying is the desired learning outcome of the program. Now, before I get into more details, let me also give you some uh, clarification that came out from the AICTE. Soon after, there was a lot of confusion uh, on what's mandatory, what's not mandatory. They came up with a statement, and this, is, this was reported by the print, uh, and I'm reading out their statement. I'm quoting them. They say it's also imperative to mention that it is an option given by the council, which is not binding on the states or universities. And for various entrance exams, such as JEE, CET, etc., they may continue to hold the entrance exams in physics, chemistry and mathematics, as is being done now, and gradually decide to conduct exams in other subjects later after discussing and taking decisions in the university senate or academic councils and state level committees. And this was a statement that was released. So basically what they said is that it's not um, binding on states and universities and they are free to do what they want to. Before we go into what this means, whether these bridge courses will actually help uh, students, what are the skill sets that students will need, etc. I'm going to give you a brief outlook on what the statistics as far as engineering courses are concerned in India look like, look like right now. Let's first talk about admissions, right? Admissions in engineering colleges, according to reports, have seen a decline in the last five years. And the All India uh, Council for uh, Technical Education called for a two-year ban on new engineering institutes from academic year 2020 till 2022. If you take a look at the enrollment and placement figures that's on your screen right now, over the last five years, you will see, and this is only for undergrad students, you will see that the intake capacity has actually gone down in the last five years. However, enrollment of students has been more or less the same. But the problem here is that only half the students being enrolled are actually being placed. And that's been the trend for the last couple of years. There are multiple reports talking about how skill set is an important factor for that. So today, what we're going to try and understand is what does this mean for engineering students? Uh, will bridge courses actually help? Why are so uh, few people getting placed as opposed to the number of people who are being enrolled? And whether this sort of option is required at all? Will premier institutes uh, like IITs, follow suit. To answer all of these questions, I have with me Professor Pradeepta Banerjee, who is a professor of structural engineering at IIT Bombay. He's been there since 1988. So he comes with his immense experience uh, and knowledge to give us all of this information. And I couldn't find a better expert to talk about this. So Mr. Banerjee, thank you so much for joining us and giving us your time. My first question to you is this, what does this mean for engineering uh, aspirants? If you can you know, take a step back and tell us whether you think that this uh, sort of option was really needed. See, uh, there are there are two aspects to the issue. Okay, uh, one aspect is that uh, you know engineering without mathematics is a little bit difficult. You know, because because if in every aspect of engineering as well as science, math 
is a basic requirement. So that is there. You know, not so much physics. Uh, you know, however, uh, what's happened is I'll, I'll I'll tell you one of the things in IITs. Okay, and I'm talking about IIT Bombay specifically because I was involved in it personally. Uh, you know, in in 2001, uh, we actually un, uh, you know uh, went through a, a very exhaustive undergraduate curriculum uh, revision. And the reason why we did that was the following: that we we found out that we were teaching physics, uh, you know, subjects which. Uh, you know, they had all. They were already studying in eleventh and twelfth. Okay, so basically, what we did was we said, okay, since they already understand the the physics part of it, okay, we will we will go into the other aspects of science and and engineering. Okay, so that was something that we did, and we continue that today. Mm. You know, for example, let's say quantum mechanics is taken by electrical engineers because they need it. Okay, however, the others don't take that at all. Okay, civil civil and mechanical engineers take mechanics because that's what's so so what happened was it became horses for courses kind of thing you know mm. or rather courses for horses okay but uh, so so that was that was that's continuing now uh, the issue that happens is that basic physics is also required in engineering okay now uh, so so the whole point is that I'm saying that. By and large, if I look at AICT, you know, mm -hmm. AICT actually looks at engineering colleges across the nation. Okay, so maybe physics not being taught is not a big disaster. However, I must still add that uh, a lot of those people will come into the IITs, and so that that brings you to the second aspect. Okay, a little bit of of discussion with stakeholders. Uh, you know, would probably have been better before having decided that maths and physics is not going to be, uh, because for example, uh, we still, I mean, do, are we going to change the advanced JE? But tell me this, because this is one of the things that they've put in their approval process handbook. They've said that universities will offer suitable bridge courses, such as maths, physics, engineering, drawing, etc., for students coming from diverse backgrounds to achieve desired learning outcomes of the Program. So, do you believe that these suitable bridge courses will actually let help bridge that gap in let, learning? No, let me ask you this question. Do we provide the bridge learning before they take the JE exam? Because you see, the point that I'm trying to make is see, bridge courses, for example, today, uh, you know, uh, earlier, uh, we used to, when we went to IITs, we, we, we studied English literature. Today, uh, for example, we have bridge courses. Uh, for non-English speaking students. So, so bridge courses per se is not a new phenomena and it will not, not, not be a problem. But then what do we test mm. for, for, for admission into the IITs? What do we test the student on? You know, I mean, I think those are the basic questions that are out there. You know, I'm just saying that uh, you know, before making this kind of an AICT saying this, you know, see if it if it was let's say uh, you know NCRT saying that look, you know, but AICT saying this, which means basically AICT is about technical education, okay, mm -hmm. and saying that bridge courses can be offered, okay. Now you know we have four years, okay. If we, we if we take a lot of bridge courses, okay, will it dilute the you know, the applied engineering subjects. These are questions that are out there. I'm not saying that they're insurmountable, but my my thing is that the uh, how bridge courses in the universities and IITs, I can understand, but how are we going to admit them? But that's one thing that ASET has come up with a the clarification. They've said that it's imperative to mention that it is an option given by the council, which is not binding on the states or universities and for various entrance exams, such as JEE, CET, et cetera. Do you believe that they will follow suit at all? Because it's not binding, they say, on any states or universities or even no, entrance. No, but, but, but let me put it this way. Once AICT says that, okay, mm -hmm. what will happen to students in 11, 12? Mm -hmm. You see, 
you know, my question here is the following. It's, it's, it's easy to say that, you know, we, you know, what are they saying? You know, you see my point. They are saying that we, so let me say that I want maths and physics. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am then, you know, eliminating because a lot of students may take this literally and take other courses. Okay. Because maths and physics are tough courses. And so they may take easier courses, but they want to come into engineering. For instance, there are multiple uh, articles, multiple reports talking about how many seats are vacant. There is data to show that seats are vacant in private uh, institutions. If you can explain to us why that is the case and if this is being done to sort of ensure that more seats are filled. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, primarily because my gut feeling is that, uh, uh, you know, engineering colleges, the seats being vacant, okay, are really in the engineering colleges. See, today, as I said, there are some six or seven states which have given a huge uh, boost to private engineering colleges, okay? And private engineering colleges that are at the lower rung are, are really, are really the, you know, when you say 50% seats vacant, okay, mm -hmm. it's a misnomer in the sense that maybe there are, there are, you know, 2.5 lakh, uh, uh, I'm just giving you an off of this thing, 2.5 lakh engineering uh, seats around India and 1,25,000 uh, are, are there. Now, now where, is the, where is the gap? Is the gap, uh, you know, see, that's what I'm saying, 50, 55,000 engineering vacant. You know, Maharashtra is one state which, which actually went big on private engineering colleges and there are a lot of private engineering colleges which have been, uh, you know, built without uh, faculty and, you know, infrastructure. So obviously in those kinds of situations, see, as you say, uh, across the 1.23 lakhs, do we really require that many engineers? I think those are the things that we need to ask ourselves. But the also the other problem is, and uh, we have data to, to show this from AICT itself, that the number of people being placed are also not enough. If, uh, you know, 7 lakh or 8 lakh people in undergrad, only talking about undergrad uh, courses, are being placed, uh, just 50%, barely 50% of them uh, are being uh, placed out of the ones who are being enrolled. Why is that the case? There, are, it, two, there, are, again, there, are, there are There are two aspects to it. There are two aspects to it, okay? One is that a lot of them who graduate, okay, do not have the necessary, if you remember way back, uh, you know, Mr. Narayan Murthy said that 80% of the graduates are unemployable. Remember that statement that he had made, I think almost 10, 15 years ago, okay, at that time. You see, that's an issue. An issue is that, you know, if, if, if you do not have good education, you do not have this thing, you're unemployable. Okay. Now, next, the, the other aspect to it is, does the engineering industry in India have the capability to absorb the number of graduating students? You know, mm -hmm. see, that's, that's I think, a, a, a point that nobody's ever asked. Okay. You're really asking and saying that 50% of the graduates are. So there are two aspects to it. One is that maybe, maybe about, 30 to 40 percent are do not have the necessary skills okay to to be employed in engineering industry and second aspect is maybe engineering industry cannot absorb eight lakh students they can only absorb four lakh so i think you know see the problem in a world over uh, world over there is a there is this industry academia interaction which says that we will only create as many as can be absorbed every year. Okay. So, so, so the, the question of course is, is an issue in India. India is a large country with large number of, of students. I think 12 million uh, students graduate from school. Okay. Do all of them have to get, become graduates? Hmm. Is the question that we ask. No. So now that now that the AICT has actually said that it's not binding on states or universities, are you essentially saying that they'll now have to 
tread with caution because you are talking about skill sets and uh, that's one of the major problems. Uh, and what skill sets does an engineer need to have, if you can explain that to us. And uh, you also mentioned that maths uh, is extremely important. So if that is what being is given it? as an option, is, is that what, you, what you're essentially saying is that that's a problem if it's being given as an option? See, math, maths is required for understanding engineering. I mean, you know, literally, for example, Every course that I have taught, okay, in structural engineering over my entire uh, life has involved some amount of mathematics, okay? Some of them, I teach them as part of the course, you know, because that's, that's some of the things that skill sets that they will not have bring on the table, okay? But some of them are, are I mean, if I start teaching maths, in structural engineering, then when will I teach structural engineering? <laughs> you see, that, that's, that's the issue. So maths, I think, is a very, very uh, is essential in engineering. I mean, I, I would put it that much, okay? Mm. Uh, not so much in, in industry. Let me put it be very, very clear, okay? Uh, you know, now what, does in, what are the skills that industry need, okay? In my mind, uh, there are two things that industry needs. Uh, one is a little uh, domain knowledge. Mm. Okay, domain knowledge is very important. You know, like for example, you know, if you are if you go into the chemical process industry, if you don't understand process engineering, okay, you're not going to be useful. I'm, I'm just giving a chemical, not from civil, you know what I mean? Okay, so that, that's the point. Okay, so therefore, certain amount of domain knowledge is essential. The other aspect that, that kind of separates the, the good engineer from the not so good engineer is the ability to analyze a problem. A problem meaning a practical problem. You know, in, in industry, you're always going to have some problem. Do you have the analytical skills to understand what that problem is and solve that problem? So, so that's that's a little bit different from domain knowledge. That's the ability to analyze. Okay. So, so therefore, which is the reason why, uh, you know, in, in engineering, we we focus on projects, we focus on laboratory because you know when you do those things, you gain that ability to analyze okay mm -hmm. so i think these are the two things that are essential for engineers okay uh, regurgitate our 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 system you know our system uh, unfortunately uh, historically has been regurgitating facts mm -hmm. regurgitation of facts is not does not make a good engineer all right. So some of the concerns that you've mentioned, if I have to put it in a nutshell, you said maths is an important subject. Some subjects are extremely important, cannot be given as an option. So how will that even work? You also spoke about how bridge courses will even work when you already have so much syllabus to cover already. And some basics is what people should know when they get into uh, uh, engineering and that is uh, required uh, and it comes through these subjects. So that's important to know. Uh, but this is also important to know because uh, the statement that's released by the uh, AICT has now said that it is imperative to mention that it's an option given by the council, which is not binding on the states or universities and for various uh, entrance exams such as JE and CET. So basically they're saying that it's an option and it's not binding on them and they're free to do whatever they want. Uh, we really have to see how this pans out, but Professor Banerjee, thank you so much uh, for joining us and yeah, putting it very simply what, what really is needed to become an engineer.